This is worth knowing too, because if you're preyed upon by a psychopath, which you will be to some degree at some point in your life, the psychopath, who will be narcissistic, will presume that you're stupid and, and, and that you deserve to be taken advantage of because you're naive and stupid. So it's actually a good thing that he's doing it. And uh, he, his proof for, and I'm saying he because there are more male psychopaths, um, the, uh, the proof that you're stupid and naive is that he can take advantage of you. And so, like, if you were wiser, you'd, you'd be, you know, you'd, you'd know his tricks, and then it wouldn't be morally necessary for him to show you just exactly who knows what about what. And so, the psychopath will use his ability to, to fool you as proof of his own grandiose, grandiose omnipotence, omniscience, and narcissism. And the problem with that is that you, you can be fooled by a psychopath. And virtually anybody can. So that Robert Hare, for example, who studied psychopaths for a long time and interviewed a lot of them, like hundreds of them, and videotaped many of the interviews, he said when he was talking to the psychopath, he always believed what they were saying. And then he'd watch the video afterwards and see where the conversation went off the rails. But, you know, the, pro pro the proclivity to be polite in a conversation is very strong. And if you're polite, you don't object to the way that the person unfolds their strategy, you know. And psychopaths are pretty good at figuring out how to manipulate, obviously, how to manipulate people. And the probability that you will be immune to that is extraordinarily low. Go watch Paul Bernardo being interviewed by policemen on, on YouTube. That's bloody, it, that's enlightening, man. Paul Bernardo, he's like the CEO of a meeting in that video, you know. He gives the cops hell, he gives the lawyers hell, he protests his innocence. He basically tells them that they're rude and untrustworthy because they don't trust him because he did a few little things 17 years ago. And he gets away with it a few little things, right? I mean, he killed a bunch of people, including the sister of his girlfriend at the time. And, you know, he was a repeat sexual offender and murderer. It's like, but he basically goes, well, you know, that's a long time ago. It's like, we're, we're past that, aren't we? I mean, I'm having a discussion with you. I'm trying to solve, help you solve some crimes, which, by the way, I committed, but we won't bring that up. You know, and you're, 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 you're accusing me of being a liar. Like, you're not playing fair. What, what's up with you? And then when they answer, he looks at his fingernails, which is like, that's a lovely little manipulative thing, because it basically means whatever happens to be under my fingernail at the moment is much higher priority than listening to your foolish story. And you watch, you'll see people do that to you. And then you get a little insight into what they're up to. He's very good at that. And so, or he looks outside, or he, or, or he just looks at his hands, or he looks out the window, immediately dismissive in his nonverbal behavior. It's brilliant. The, the, the courts were forced to release that, by the way. But look it up, Paul Bernardo on YouTube. Wow, it's, it's just mind-boggling. He's so good at what he does. And he's good looking and he's charismatic and, you know, he can really pull it off. And you can't tell what's happening with the cops and the lawyers, whether they're just letting him play as a routine to get some information from him, or whether he's actually setting them back on his heels. And I suspect it's a bit of both, but uh, it's a masterful performance. If you didn't know who he was and you were watching it without the audio, you'd think he's the CEO of some company giving his employees hell for not being up to scratch. That's all his body language. His eye contact, everything just speaks that. It's amazing.